So good morning to everybody and uh, welcome to this uh, open market consultation event uh, of uh, uh, the pre-commercial procurement of the IMPRESS project. I'm Regina Ciancio, I'm the IMPRESS project coordinator and I'm really pleased to wel welcome here today. Uh, let me start to thank the host of this event which is taking place here in Dusseldorf at Lindorn uh, Hotel airport hotel in Dusseldorf. Uh, so they are Rafal Dunin Borkowski, Impress Scientific Coordinator, and Amir Tavabi, Impress Technical Coordinator. They are both um, from the ERC Institute in Forschung Centrum in Gulich. And uh, let me also welcome and thank all the other people that have contributed to the organization of this event, who are Paul Bersan, our project manager, of the IMPRESS project and uh, the senior procurement experts from the Corvers team, project partners, uh, Stefan Corvers and Beatrice Gomez. I also want to thank the lead procurers uh, so the, from the first purchase department of Martina Berger. So it is an intense phase we are dealing with at the moment. And I remind you the scope of the event of today, which is dedicated to companies. Uh, as you heard, the event is taking place here in Dusseldorf, but we have also remote participation from many participants. We have more than 60 attendees today, among which many are from companies. And uh, you have been informed that actually companies could reach us today in a special way, being uh, uh, hidden, and this is to keep a confidentiality among the companies and uh, with us in this delicate phase of the pre-commercial procurement. So um, I want to underline that the event today will be recorded and uh, you will have the possibility to address your questions to us uh, to a special function that you find below your screen, which is called the Q&A. So we have uh, an intense day. Uh, we have a, a very dense agenda that I scroll very quickly. The intent today indeed is to start with a general presentation of the project, which will be given by me as project coordinator, uh, which will be followed by a presentation from Stefan Corvers and Beatrice Gomez from Corvers, uh, which will provide all the information on the pre-commercial procurement procedure in Europe. Then we will continue with a presentation given by Amir Tavabi on the technical insight of the Impress PCP. Then Martina will provide all the instructions of the tendering procedure and especially on the gu guidelines on how to apply. Then we will conclude this part with a talk from Rafal Dunin Burkowski, who will provide uh, um, feedback on initial user bidder within uh, the um, uh, open market consultation phase. Uh, this space will be followed by question and answers. Uh, again, uh, you can address your question to the special function that you find below the screen. We hope to receive many inputs from you because this will provide us uh, a possibility to start to answer your question. But please, uh, you will see in the following presentations that you will find a special link on our website where you can continue to come with the question to us. So, since we have a very tight schedule, I will start with my presentation. As I said, I will try to give you in a nutshell all the details on the IMPRESS project, <clears throat> its aims, objectives, and general rationale. So let's start from the general ID card of the project. What is IMPRESS? IMPRESS stands for Interoperable Electron Microscopy Platform for Advanced Research and Services. Actually, in this full title, you can already identify the two main keywords of our rational, interoperable and services. And you will see how they are interlinked and they represent the basis of the rational of the project in the next slides. IMPRESS uh, started officially on February 2023 with a uh, lifetime of four years ahead. It is a funded project uh, within the Horizon Europe scheme and was submitted within a specific type of funding scheme, the Infratech call, uh, which was supposed to award the project capable to deliver research and development for the next generation of scientific instrumentation tools and methods. 
actually from this preliminary information, you may can already understand which was the big challenge we were having in front of us. Because in practice, as an electron microscopy community strongly motivated to apply to this call, we were asked by the European Commission to provide the best strategy to demonstrate how we can generate a paradigm shift towards the next generation of TM instrumentation. Of course, we started from an analysis on the present situation of electron microscopy around the world. And we all know very well that over the last decades, the number of electron microscopes around the world has exploded. There are many TMs which have been purchased for many specialties. And in most of the cases, this has been done to avoid performance compromises. As a counter effect, what we have at the moment is that the electron microscopy in Europe and in the world is very heterodiverse and very fragmented. And this is because there are too many specialized applications and sometimes niche applications. The, the main criticality at the moment is that, that such an application of effort, of upfront running cost of these uh, extremely expensive machines has brought uh, to considerable concerns on the sustainability of these infrastructures over the long term. And this is especially to convince policymakers to put money into these facilities. So how can we solve this? Actually, it is extremely clear to us, but in general to the scientific community, that we need to produce a step change. And that in general, the growth of the TM market is propelled by technological advances. However, as scientists, we know very well that sometimes we are limited by the monopoly and by what um, manufacturers are restricting the operation of the electron microscopes. Most importantly, it, is, it has been demonstrated that the availability of customized components for TMs and especially the possibility to rely on a diversified user experience is a key ingredient to promote innovation. Here I just show you some of the examples which have been pursued in the electron microscopy community. These are taken from, from some consortium partners, but also from literature. And you can see how many instrumentation development have been done in the latest decades in order to boost the innovation in electron microscopy. And especially you can see how much in the latest years has been done in order to expand the horizon of electron microscopy, also to other techniques through interoperable arrangements. Here, for instance, you can see an example of a, um, a correlative workflow to uh, build some multimodal approaches, for instance, to combine inoperando spectroscopy with the RIGS and electron microscopy together. Uh, so, the question remains how to move towards the new era of electron microscopy. It is clear that we need a technological step change because it is important that TM facilities can provide more and more methodological approaches that are able to cross all the scientific domain in order to expand the horizon of the current electron microscopy applications. This means that TM infrastructures have to be able to offer as flexible as possible combination of state-of-the-art techniques in fully interoperable arrangement. And here again, we are back to one of our keywords, interoperability. And interoperability does not only apply to data, data sharing and data handling, but also, and especially, to uh, uh, hardware and uh, to the need of standardized and interconnected methodologies. In all this, open innovation and, and co-creation are essential keywords to build and reinforce the dialogue between the companies and electron microscopy scientists to overcome technical challenges that nowadays cannot be solved by the electron microscopy market alone. This means that um, as community, electron microscopy community, we are asked to provide instrumentation able to offer optimal and flexible services to perform innovative experiments. So in one sentence, we need to make TMs flexible 
to a diversity of multimodal experiments instead of adapting experiments to TMs. Uh, so you can understand here the other keyword I was mentioning at the beginning. Impress is within the infratech call, but still users' services are at the heart of Impress. And you will see in the following slides that they will represent a, an, an important benchmark to adapt ourselves to their demands. So, which is the mission of the project? Impress, how... Uh, we impress we reach these scopes. Uh, impress aims to generate uh, this transition into a new TM area by making uh, TMs flexible and adaptable by individual users and uh, any operator and companies working in many fields of applications from material science to biology in order to provide any operator with the possibility to design specialized experiments uh, and optimize the samples that can be brought ideally from TM to any other co um, uh, compatible characterization techniques, from sample preparation tool, but also to surface te science techniques, including the synchrotron techniques. From this uh, image, uh, you can see that TM is indeed at the core of our scheme, but it is strongly interconnected with many other characterization techniques. What uh, Impress will do to make this happen? The core of the project is the co-development of an interoperable platform consisting of interchangeable components, hardware and software components, which will be based on a modular and standardized cartridge within cartridge concept, which we name ECAT, where E stands for electrons, CAT stands for correlative, adaptable, and transferable. This is because these devices will be conceived in order to allow users to perform correlative experiments that can be easily transferred between TM and other instrumentation. The device has to be adaptable to the requirements of the users that can be still changed over the time and can be transferable in order to move, be moved interchangeably within an electron microscope, but also to be moved to other instrumentation to be adapted to, to it. Here you can see the scheme of the, 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 the ECAT modular system, which can give you a flavor of the high flexibility and the modularity of this system. Indeed, the, the cartridge will be conceived according to this cartridge within cartridge concept in order to span across the different segments of the electron microscope from the aperture plane to the sample plane and also to be moved to other instrumentation. The cartridge will be built in order to host many technical requirements, and you will see more about this in Amir Tavabi's presentation afterwards. And these functionalities will allow to perform many different experiments. But of course, this is all with one specific target in mind, to have at the end a flexible TM, please uh, not, uh, pay attention on this because uh, this is extremely important. We are not going to design a new microscope. We are not going to invent a new electron microscopy column. We are just going to work and design and develop uh, compatible components that will be conceived at the highest level of stand, open standard, open interfaces and interoperability in order to fit with the many electron microscopes from different manufacturers in order to integrate these components with all possible instrumentation that are compatible to each other in order to allow users to perform a multimodal experiments in order to raise in general the TM instrumentation to the highest level of open standards and interoperability. Uh, to make this happen, Impress brings together 19 partners distributed across the European landscape, among which six are research and technology organizations, five are universities, then we have five research infrastructures. And this is very important because this allow us to put our project in direct connection with many users communities from different disciplines. Then we have three small and medium sized enterprises which are already part of our consortium. 
but uh, through the pre-commercial co procurement that uh, you will know more about today, uh, more companies uh, will be part of our scheme. Here you can see them uh, broken into categories and uh, you, will, uh, uh, you can know more about each uh, partner site at our website so that uh, you will know in the end. So this is the general work plan of the project. You can see the typical per structure, but apart from the structure and the, the tag of the single word packages here, what I want to uh, stress in this slide is the profound, the, the very deep interconnection between the word packages. Indeed, the beyond the general coordination, management, and execution of the project, which will be handled by word package number one, and the strong dissemination, communication, and exploitation and training plan, which is a responsibility of the word package number seven, we will have. Uh, um, we have uh, uh, five scientific work packages, which are all inter interconnected together to uh, create integration and to um, realize the impress objectives. Indeed, the project will involve um, the co-development of specific components that are dealing with electron sources, optics and detectors, multifunctional sample environments. And in, the, and in the end, we have also a work package dedicated to software automation and control uh, uh, that, as you see, is cross-talking with all the work packages because the idea is indeed to have, in the end, an interoperable hardware and software platform. All these developments will be integrated with the interoperable cartridge-based platform, which is the core of work package number two, uh, which will uh, um, deliver prototypes for all the project applications. Let's see more in detail, but still very quickly, which are the focuses of the work packages. So starting from work package number three, the focus will be the develop, development of multipurpose bright electron sources with improved the brightness, emittance, and flexibility for advanced imaging spectroscopy. Uh, the activity will include uh, development of compact um, uh, sources, which uh, uh, reduces the primary aperture aberrations in a cold FEG emission gun, the development of the first electrostatic gun aberration corrector, uh, the development of electron optical devices for ultra fast electron beam modulation, and then a fast, flexible, and user friendly electron optics simulation software. This, of course, is strongly interconnected with the work package number six. Then, electron optics and detectors will develop a new event based detectors and novel electron phase shaping technology to improve the quality of information retrieved per electron scattering event. Uh, the activity will span from the development of time resolution uh, of detectors, which will be extended to the sub-nanometers domain to programmable faceplate technology, event-based det uh, detection for sparse sto data storage in coincidence exper <coughs> experiments. Then there will be a focus also on the biological applications so with the optimized imaging of electron beam sensitive biological samples. Then there will be an activity on mutual and multimodal experiments on, and specifically on coincidence experiment of putting together eels and cathode luminescence in the sub nanometer domain. Then our package number five will focus on in situ operando and correlative experiment, um, uh, focusing on the development of multifunctional chips with uh, specialized capabilities for in situ, in operando and correlative experiment with the possibility to integrate TM with other techniques. And here the activity will cover the development of electrochemical cells uh, and microreactors for battery uh, research, research of microreactor for catalytic experiments, an attention also in this work package will be to biological sample with the specific cryo liquid cell uh, integrated in the ECAT cartridge. Then there will be correlative experiments of putting together RIGs at synchrotron radiation facilities and ILS spectroscopy in ATM. 
and in the end, the time resolved experiment uh, integrating the capability of laser beam lines uh, with uh, TM applications. Uh, this is very important. It is very important to underline that uh, this uh, work package will tag all the research infrastructures that are part of our consortium. And this is again to give you the feeling on how much users will be important for us to tag specific use cases and to identify and better reshape the technical requirements of our um, design. All this will be strongly interconnected with the work package number six, which will be instead devoted to software automation and control because all the scientific work packages, hardware work packages will be um, uh, driven by digital technologies, which will be developed in full compliance with the FAIR principles, going from the development of interoperable databases, a software control system, automation, artificial intelligence, and machine learning algorithms for data analysis and control of experimental workflows. Um, as I said before, uh, in the same way as uh, work package number six uh, will cross all the work packages, of course, all the technical work packages will be strongly interconnected with work package number two, which is the backbone of our project, because it is devoted to the development and testing of the interoperable platform for TM through a pre-commercial procurement procedure. And this is the core of the meeting of today to give you insights on this procedure, especially on the open market consultation phase we are facing at the moment. We are dealing with it at the moment that after all this step that we have already gone through will bring to the publication of the tender by the 1st of November. At the moment, we have been defining technical and scientific requirements of the interoperable platform and together with Corvers and with the, the purchase department, uh, we prepared all the documentation for this uh, uh, phase. But uh, let's see more closely, even though you will receive more details in the next presentation, just uh, an introduction on what the pre-commercial procurement is. Actually, the pre-commercial procurement uh, is uh, not more than a tendering process. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it has been introduced by the European Commission with the specific purpose to advance research and development services because it is actually a specific scheme of a tendering process. In our project, we will make use of the pre-commercial procurement to establish a synergistic platform between companies and scientists to co-develop jointly together uh, the, the um, cartridges with the different uh, applications uh, related to the uh, individual work packages. Um, actually, uh, the, 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 pre, the PCP is characterized by the, uh, these three different phases. And the scope, as you can see here, is to go through a selection process, which has as a final outcome, not the idea to identify one single company as a winner, but to set a number of companies as winner as winners that jointly with diverse expertise can bring different competencies to the development of the specific prototypes of the project. Um, the PCP organization includes uh, seven impress partners. Uh, uh, for Zugan Centrum, Julich is the lead procurer, but there are also six more public buyers, and the PCP will be executed under the German law with FZJ, as I said, as a lead procurer. Legal support will be provided by uh, the Corvers partner. Uh, now, I guess that before entering into, into the PC, uh, PCP uh, word, uh, you have the main ingredients uh, to understand uh, more closely uh, the unique uh, characteristics of the co-creation of value chain uh, put in place by Impress. As we said, the interoperable uh, platform is the overarching concept of our project. And through it, all the phases of the pre-commercial procurement, which will be characterized by the definition, design, development, and testing of standardized hardware and software interfaces will bring to uh, the realization of the ECAT cartridges. This, of course, as we said, will be strongly connected to the specific items of the work packages. So, so with sources, adaptive optics and detectors in situ operando and correlative, 
but also with the software approaches for remote control and artificial intelligence. Uh, all this uh, will be pursued in constant uh, um, interaction with the users that will allow us to adapt also after the end of the project, the prototypes to uh, the user needs of uh, in, uh, ever increasing um, user communities. Uh, at the end of the project, uh, we are we committed to deliver at least eight prototypes of cartridges which are associated to the technologies and the contents of the project and will be designed and developed at uh, technical readiness level eight, which is uh, quite high. And they will be made disposable for users for experiment from all the participating research infrastructures. Another extremely important uh, innovation aspect of IMPRESS is that uh, all data will be put uh, in an open archive, which we call the FairCube, which is actually the first open signed and innovation hub for TN. Actually, the FairCube will be the first hub managing and sharing uh, not only data, not only metadata, but also documentation, uh, technological data that will be put in this open database by scientists, by users, by companies, so creating an open database according to peer principles and aligned with the European Open Science Cloud in order to provide TM operators and users with this exchange platform and to allow to constantly retrieve data, but also to fill the database with the new implemented data based on a further input that can come with the further experiments from the electron microscopy community and all the communities using the prototypes. In such a way, all people having access to this database will have the opportunity to develop also specialized versions of the prototype or just to use uh, the, the, the existing version of the prototypes and to flex them to other experiments. So here I come to my conclusions and uh, to some important take home message for you uh, all, but especially for companies. In general, uh, you got that the um, ambitious uh, objective is, uh, of IMPRESS is to set a real revolution in the world of electron, in the electron microscopy um, fields, uh, to establish a new innovation ecosystem in order to generate a paradigm shift towards a new era of TM instrumentation. The joint efforts between the companies, the scientists, and end users will indeed create a unique co-creation scheme where innovative and customizable prototypes can be made available for users and for any operator. Through the PCP, the winning companies will have a new business opportunity because in practice, they will be able to expand their horizon also to other domains and to sell their products to, to, to customers other than uh, uh, users of the electron microscopy community, customers also working with other instrumentation. More importantly, work, thanks to the approach of IMPRESS, which uh, means uh, uh, development of open components based on open standards and open interfaces, uh, every, everyone will have the possibility to decouple himself, herself from the vendor lock-in and support innovation working in an open science environment. With this, uh, I conclude my presentation starting a video. Imagine a world in which scientific systems, tools, and platforms can exchange and use instrumentation and data fluently without obstacles and limitations. In transmission electron microscopy, users can only imagine. STEM researchers face limitations in designing novel multimodal experiments and establishing science-driven correlated workflows. Technical constraints prevent the interchange of components between different planes in a TEM column, TEMs from different manufacturers, and TEMs in other scientific installations. Limitations in software for instrument operation, control, and remote access result in wasted time and efficiency. Taken together, these constraints result in poor quality science and less efficient cooperation between scientific disciplines. Technology should facilitate research, so 
How can we expand the horizon of STEM? The EU funded Impress project aims to answer this question. Thanks to funding from Horizon Europe, Impress brings together 19 partners composed of academic and industrial experts in electron microscopy and correlative techniques, as well as end users. The Impress project introduces a revolutionary concept. The interoperable platform composed of standardized hardware and software interfaces and modular components with multiple functionalities, many of which are not available commercially. Grounded on an innovative open cartridge-based system, it will create technological solutions that can be transferred interchangeably between sample and aperture planes across electron microscopes from all manufacturers, as well as the specimen preparation equipment and other characterization tools. Instruments and facilities will work in a seamless ecosystem of exchange. We refer to the cartridge as ECAT, as it meets the following requirements, correlated, adaptable, and transferable. What you see here is just a concept. It has a groundbreaking idea in its simplest form. Through close cooperation between experts and academic laboratories and innovative companies, it will come to life. This is the moment to be part of it. By using a pre-commercial procurement tendering procedure, or PCP, selected companies will be involved in a competitive development process composed of three phases. Solution design. A number of companies with complementary expertise will be called to design solutions and verify technical and economic feasibility. Prototype implementation. The most promising ideas will be developed and tested at the lead procurer's premises. Validation and demonstration of solutions. Several prototypes developed by chosen companies will be tested and validated in operational environments. Companies chance to work at a pre-commercial stage with scientists and end users will give them competitive advantages to speed up targeted innovation and grow internationally. The creation of multi-purpose and adaptable solutions will add flexibility to the design and operation of complete systems. For the winning companies, this will open up business opportunities and facilitate entering new sectors and markets. The synergistic Impress Innovation ecosystem is just around the corner. Imagine a world where all of this happens. You can make it. Together, we can make it. Join the tender. Okay, with this, we conclude this first uh, slot of the agenda. And I take also the opportunity to thank uh, Promo Science, uh, who is our pro which is our project partner, who has developed the video and is supporting us uh, so intensively in the communication of uh, the project. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Beatriz Gomez. Uh, I'm working as part of the legal team at Corvus Procurement Services. We are, as uh, Regina said, supporting a, from a legal perspective this PCP procedure. I'm here together with my colleague Stefan Corvus, and uh, we will give you in these uh, minutes on some insight about what is a pre-commercial procurement uh, approach and how it works in practice. So first of all, I always like to start with a, a definition of what is innovation procurement. So basically innovation procurement happens when a public buyer uh, needs a solution to satisfy a need, but there is no solution ready in the market to purchase. So therefore it has to develop that solution or deploy that solution, an innovative solution we're talking about, to address, solution, to address uh, problems that they have now or they may have in the future, so in the midterm or long term. So to make it very clear, we have a problem, but the market cannot offer already a solution that can fully satisfy that problem. Focusing on the PCP approach, uh, basically PCP aims to buy research and development services from the market. Why? Well, as I say, because uh, the public buyer say, okay, I need the solution, I go to the market, and not only I cannot find a solution that is feasible for me, but also based on the research I have done before, it seems that it's not going to be a solution available soon. Therefore, I want to collaborate with the markets in order to create, develop that solution. Um, now focusing on, on how it works, the PCP approach, and as Regina mentioned, this is no more than a tender procedure, but with some specialities that I'm going to mention now. And I will say the main feature is that we have a competitive development in phases. So as you can see 
in the right part of the of the slides. Uh, usually we have three phases. A first phase, which is focused on designing a solution. A second phase in developing a prototype. And a third phase in basically testing that prototype in, in uh, real conditions. In this case, in the facilities of the different uh, public buyers. So the, the, main, uh, the main objective here is to ensure competition from the very beginning to the end of the procedure. And as you can also see, the number of suppliers, you know, the number of contractors will reduce through the different phases. Uh, we also have a risk benefit sharing between the public buyer and the contractor. So not only the risks are shared, but also the benefit. So it's important to have into account that the benefits of this PCP will also uh, uh, benefit not only the public buyer, but also you as companies. And also another important uh, feature is that there is a clear separation between the procurement of the research and development services, which is the goal of this PCP, and the deployment of a commercial volume on end, uh, of end products. And this is important because we have to keep in mind that the PCP is not the end, but after that, we may have another procedure in order to purchase that solution. Uh, some uh, idea about the legal framework. Uh, here, I only want you to take into account that a PCP is a very special procedure. And Regina perfectly explained the rationale behind it and the uh, effort and initiative of the European Commission to promote the research and development in Europe. Uh, in uh, legal, in public procurement uh, in Europe, we have a set of harmonized rules, which are the directive, public procurement directives. But in this case, uh, because we are buying only research and development services, we don't apply in full this, uh, this rule. So we have more flexibility to design the procedure as we like, but of course, always taking into account that there are general principles that need to be ensured in this PCP. Transparency, of course, equal treatment and non-discrimination. So all the companies and technology vendors have the same opportunities. Also, we will ensure that we, any requirements will be proportionate. Mm -hmm. And uh, a clear example of this aim of the European Commission to foster research and development in Europe is the publication in 2007 of a communication setting up uh, the requirements and definition of pre-commercial procurement. Well, uh, how we apply this in Impress, no? now that we have a, an idea of what is PCP and how it works, how we are translating it in this, in this specific project. Well, we also have three phases, so we have a First phase in which uh, we design, we ask you to design a solution. Mm -hmm. A second phase in which uh, a prototype will be developed and implemented, and a third phase in which we will validate and demonstrate and demonstrate that solutions. And here in this uh, table, you can see an initial uh, plan about the estimated number of contractors and budgets per phase. Uh, this is a plan, as we say, that is a, a, what we have been working so far. But of course, here it's going to be essential your feedback. Because this is the moment uh, through uh, your participation in this event and also uh, filling in the questionnaire to tell us if we are right or we are missing something and perhaps uh, you can help us with that. So our idea is to have in the phase one at least four contractors, in the second phase at least three, and in the phase three at least two. And you can also see here the estimated subcontracting cost per contractor taking into account these numbers no, this minimum participant and the total uh, total budget per phase. Something that we also want to cross check with you is our timeline. No, now we are in the PCP preparation and the OMC <coughs> is part of this preparatory phase. So we want to cross check with you all the work we have done in the previous months and our plan for the future tender. Uh, we estimate to publish the tender, the PCP, in November of this year. And if everything goes according to the plan, and this is a viable timeline, then we will start the development of or deployment of the first phase in uh, March 2024. And now I, I give the floor to my colleague, Stefan, that will uh, continue the presentation. Thank you, Beatrice. Um... And before I start, I uh, would like to point out that it's really important that we receive your feedback on uh, the questions that we have and the questions that you may have and you can 
And we really would appreciate your uh, your input on that. So that's why we're also here. I'm going to say something about that later uh, on. We're talking about a European project. That means, of course, we're looking into the interest of the EU. So if you're talking about the procurement of the R&D services, these R&D services needs to be implemented for the majority in the EU or the associated countries as a starting point. Uh, and what does it mean? That it means that the majority of the location should be uh, located in the EU member states or the EU associated countries, um, including the principal researchers working on the PCP. From a legal perspective, there's also important, Beatrice already explained it, it's about the procurement of R&D services. That doesn't mean that you're not allowed to deliver any hardware products or something like that. That's not, a, that's not the case, but you should take into account that the majority should be related of the, to the R&D services, so not to the product. So the value of the R&D services should exceed the value of the products and the hardware. Regina already explained that one of the main pillars of uh, the Impress uh, uh, project, Impress PCP, is that we would like to have an uh, uh, open hardware and also an open software approach. Um, that means that we would like that when it comes to the hardware, that the design specifications should license to allow the object to be studied, uh, modified, created, and distributed by anyone. And the, uh, more or less the same applies for the uh, software, so the source code should also be made available on an open license. What is important is that, and I will say say that that this kind of uh, open source or open hardware approach should be uh, translated into not only into GitHub but also uh, into the FairCube uh, uh, concept, which has been explained by uh, Regina and uh, Amir, and I will dive into that a little bit more later on. Of course, the Impress is aligned with the implementation of the European Open Science Cloud ecosystem, making the Impress data services interoperable with EOS. Talking about more a little bit more in detail, and you can find all the relevant details in the tender documents uh, later on, which will be published in, in November, is that um, the API source code, the API documentation, the GUI source code and GUI documentation should be deposited in the GitHub uh, community. Um, uh, of course, there will be some um, um, uh, deviations between the different licenses that you can uh, that you can use. Uh, the backend of the API can be closed uh, source as long as it allows unrestricted use for the open API, as an example. Uh, and the API license itself should allow the redistribution and commercial use as in the Creative Commons license family. But it's important, I already mentioned that, that the majority of the uh, R&D services should be done in the EU or the EU associated countries, and also the location of companies should be there, but we also would like to give the possibilities that the minority of the IRD uh, services then could be done in other countries like the, um, uh, the GPO, uh, WTO members, like for example, in the United States. Um, of course, there are countries um, that are not allowed to, are not eligible to participate in projects. Uh, for example, Russia, Russia is not allowed to um, to participate in this uh, in this project. Another important aspect uh, that we would like to stress is that um, it's not needed that you uh, submit a proposal on your own. You can build, and we strongly recommend it to build your own consortia, to form alliances of companies in order to create the added value and complementary added value that is needed to, uh, to tackle the challenges of um, our PCP. So we are here, and as always said, we have this presentation as part of the open market consultation. And why is this so important for, for us? Because the open market consultation is a vital step in this uh, approach. Uh, as, as we already told you, that we intend to uh, launch the tender documents per November, and we're now still in the preparatory phase. So we really would like to receive feedback from you, from the, the companies and technology vendors, uh, in order to understand if we, if you have any remarks, any comments, are we, do we have some omissions or whatever it is, and also to see that the findings and, and the, uh, the research that we have done 
is uh, is logical and also from your perspective would create possibilities to submit a proposal. So the open market consultation as such is really important and that's why we also need your feedback on that and you can fill in the uh, EU uh, survey as that. Time frame, time wise, we are now uh, September 1st here in Dusseldorf. Um, the deadline for receiving the and filling the filling questionnaires is uh, September the 17th. Uh, we expect then to analyze and to come with a feedback on these questions per uh, September 28th, and then uh, September 30th is the closure of the OMC. So then we have sufficient time to uh, fine tune our tender documents uh, on the assumption that you uh, provided some valuable input uh, to us. And I think that's also one of my last remarks in my last sheets for you. Um, please fill in the questionnaire, uh, look into EU survey. Uh, you can find the material through the through the website. And uh, of course, it goes without saying, but we will anonymize all the questions that we receive from you. So uh, um, uh, we will treat everything in the best possible way in order to uh, create fairness uh, between all of you. Thank you. And that's all for our presentation. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, many thanks for joining this session. Uh, my name is Amir Tababi, and I will try to uh, give you some more in technical insight to the PCP and technical requirements of the interoperable platform. Uh, <clears throat> So as uh, you have uh, seen in the uh, complete introduction of the Impress project uh, by uh, Regina, uh, the interoperable platform is the main subject of the second work package, work package number two. And uh, work package number two is the backbone of the whole uh, Impress project, uh, which is dealing with uh, almost all other work packages as uh, in different ways. Uh, and especially with work package six as a software automation and control system. Uh, what do we mean by interoperable, interoperable platform concept? Uh, we know that we are uh, working with the uh, analytical techniques and especially in this case, transmission electron microscope. In electron microscope, we have uh, many ports, depends on the color manufacturer and the design and the complexity of the instrument uh, to modulate the electron wavefront to apply, uh, to insert the sample into the uh, microscope, I mean, the target sample or the target material that we are going to investigate and apply different stimuli on the specimen uh, for in situ or uh, modulate the transmitted uh, electron wave function when it's uh, interacted with the matter. So we have positions before uh, the specimen, at the specimen plane, and after the specimen. And every manufacturer uh, would have different uh, geometrical and dimensional aspects. So when we call something interoperable, which this means we are interested to run almost identical experiment on two different instruments from two different manufacturers to get two different set of information which is not possible in the other uh, instrument. Hence, we are asking, we are trying to develop with uh, your contribution and collaboration a module or a platform which can be transformed between the TEM columns from different uh, manufacturers and even beyond the TEM uh, technique to other uh, microscopes or to any other, almost any other analytical techniques, at least the ones who are actively participate in the IMPRESS project. So this platform has two uh, main features which are essential, which are not uh, cannot be compromised at all. And this is a clear message. Uh, one is a standardized interface 
and one, the other one is the cartilage and cartridge solution. I would like to explain it a little bit more in detail. What do we mean here? Uh, if you would like to have many different functionalities, I, as I will explain uh, in my next slides to you uh, for our experiment and for our research. Uh, it's, and as I said, we would like to run the experiment uh, on a specific a specimen, a sample at identical environment in different tools. Hence, we should, this platform should have a kind of a standardized interface, which can be fit through the, the, this interface to all uh, uh, instruments that are targeted in the IMPRESS project, which includes at least the main microscope column, the, main, uh, the microscope from main microscope manufacturers, and also several beam lines. Uh, these functionalities, uh, maybe in one uh, prototype, uh, we may have uh, one, two, three, four, five of them, uh, but at least it should be uh, compatible. So with, a, with this a standardized interface, we should be able to bring the sample from preparation tool to the any uh, measurement tool and even the storage tool. But uh, as I said before, we know that uh, each column would have a different uh, geometrical aspect. So our solution for this would be a cartridge in a cartridge solution which made from a small cartridge. This small cartridge will go to the, any tool or any instrument which has the limited, uh, the most limited space and with the functionalities. And for the next tool, which may have a different geometry, obviously a little bit more space, we have a bigger cartridge. And with this cartridge and the cartridge solution, as I will explain soon, uh, we can keep the environment of the specimen identical bef between different experiments uh, in TM and other uh, disciplines. Okay, so uh, for this, uh, we will go uh, to develop this interpreter platform. We will go through this PCB procedure. I think you have heard uh, quite a lot of uh, details and useful information from uh, our cover team and uh, that uh, we would like to design, develop, and test this platform uh, on different TM microscopes. And uh, we would like, based on this development, to uh, reach novel experimental methodologies and workflows, which are not possible at the moment. So definitely the outcome of this uh, procedure should be uh, doing a new field of research, which are not possible at this moment. Okay, uh, I guess uh, I do, uh, you, you see the timeline of this uh, PCP procedures. Uh, I will not go again, uh, I don't uh, repeat everything about the companies who will be winner and so on. Uh, I put this slide here to just emphasize about the uh, title of these three phases. Phase one is a solution design, which will start soon. And then uh, through the uh, procedure that you will hear in the next talk, we will communicate with you. We will answer uh, to your question to make uh, sure that you would reach a mature design for the tender uh, uh, and would be able to positively con uh, contribute in the tender. In the uh, phase two, uh, implementation of the prototype, uh, this is a critical point when the first prototype will be tested in different microscope. I will explain later where and how we will do this. And phase three is the validation. This means the interoperability will be validated on different microscope and the techniques, analytical techniques other than electron microscopes. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this is a summary from what I have said till now. The cartridge in a cartridge solution is essential. A standardized interface is essential. Uh, we would like to be able to put this platform in sample position before sample, after sample. So it includes sample holders, aperture holders, and rods. Uh, 
Uh, then, of course, we have a chip designed with uh, some capabilities, which I will explain more. Okay, the document you will find in the tender, uh, this includes uh, the description of the needs, what we call it as a use case. You will receive all details information in the tender documents. We will explain you how you would have access to the tender documents. Uh, in brief, uh, the first use case or the need of the description, uh, sorry, the description of the needs would be about the functional requirement of the platform, corrective maintenance, community of users, safety issue, and adaptation. Uh, I will, uh, in my next slide, I will go through these use cases, but I will try to give you the message from each use case that you can consider for the moment. Okay, functional requirements. First of all, uh, we are developing the hardware. So we have two types of requirements, hardware and software. For the hardware, this means the functionalities which we would like to introduce to the sample, like a simulator, uh, temperature control, and so on, uh, electrical contacts, I will, uh, and so on. Uh, so it should be functional. And there is a set of functionalities that are required. Also, this hardware or this component should be used uh, in, a, in, take, in a microscope, so it should be integrated with the host instrument. It should be able to communicate with the other component of the microscope so that we would be able to run an automated, ideally remotely controlled experiment. So if we have needs both on hardware side, side and software side. What are the requirements for the hardware? Uh, <clears throat> we have six requirements we have listed. Uh, yes. Uh, and I will, uh, the details of these requirements will, you will find together with all companies at the same time on the tender document. So I will not give you any number now, but everything is defined and satisfied quite in details uh, in the uh, specification, all the technical specification has been defined quite in details. First uh, functionality would be the atmosphere of the sample. So from uh, vacuum or high vacuum or ultra high vacuum regime up to ambient pressure, temperature functionality from cryogenic regime to quite elevated temperatures, non electrical contacts, uh, for different applications, including DC, BC, uh, AC, high frequency, and so on. Then the controlling the uh, specimen position inside the cartridge, and not only the specimen position, but also other components for other stimulus that you would like to have inside the cartridge. Gas and liquid pipelines, and eventually, uh, laser injection and light collection capability. So we have six hardware requirements. We know, <clears throat> sorry, we know uh, that uh, all of this is not, uh, uh, might not be possible in a single prototype, but we have this rule. Each prototype should have at least two of these functionalities according to the specifications you will find in the tender document uh, in a single prototype. So it cannot be only for one uh, function, provide only one functionality, for example, ultra high vacuum or high frequency application or uh, gas and liquid, but should have at least two, uh, should at least satisfy two of these hardware requirements. And for the software requirements, uh, you, you will read uh, every, all the details uh, uh, in our tender document. But in principle, the message is that we would like to have full control on the component through the, we should have access to the codes to be able to uh, program it, integrate it with our host instrument and run automated long time experiments. So we should have full access on the operation, acquisition, this data and so on, readout and everything, every details has been uh, written properly by our uh, software experts, uh, 
uh, and you can find all the document, uh, all the specifications later. Uh, yeah, the more details about the uh, software documents like uh, API GUI and so on. And everything, of course, would be based on open source database. This is also a clear message. Everything would be uh, based on open source. Corrective maintenance. Here, uh, the message of this use case is that uh, contractors, we are now talking not about the uh, participants in the tender, but we are talking about the beginning of the phase two, which are the contractors. All contractors uh, are responsible for shipment of the prototypes, installation, uh, unpacking the package, installation to the host instrument, training the user in the sites, uh, service the prototype during the experiment uh, or during the test, then unmount it, pack it, and ship it to the next test site or to the host company. All the all these procedures, the companies or contractors would be responsible. This is there are another there is another important point. In the phase two, Yulish, Forschung Zentrum Yulish would be the main site. So this means all the prototypes should come to Yulish and should be tested in Yulish in the phase two. <laughs> After that, they will go to the other test site. They will be distributed around all Europe. I will explain you where. But please keep it uh, in mind that in phase two, everything would first come to Yulish. And from Yulish, it should be posted to the next site. <clears throat> Another message of this uh, use case is that we have defined for the companies or for the contractors uh, how much of the development should be done at each phase. You will read it later to realize it, but in brief, for example, to enter the phase two, at least 50% of the functionalities should be provided. This means, for example, if you are talking about the pressure, uh, 10 minus, and if the target is 10 minus 10, Plus one ten minus ten Pascal, for example, at least something close to this, up to fifty percent should be provided, and it's expected to reach eighty percent at the end of the phase two. Hence, we would have eighty to eighty-five percent of of the functionalities uh, at the beginning of the phase three. This and at the end of the phase three, of course, we would expect to reach the full one hundred percent. Functionality of the each prototype. Safety issues. The message of this uh, use case. Again, like corrective maintenance, all contractors would be responsible. Would be the sole responsible for the say all safety issues during the shipment, installation, operation, and then sending back the prototypes. So, if something happens. Uh, if there is an explosion in our lab, uh, for example, and uh, or uh, it causes extra problem for the user or for the host instrument, all the safety issues are due to companies, not the test site. Of course, we will work together. We are providing all the information, all of our safety requirements, everything we will uh, provide to you, but the companies are responsible for the safety of these tests, okay? <clears throat> Community of users. Uh, I think this is uh, one of our uh, important uh, use cases, and it came based on the uh, <clears throat> personal experience of each of us as a scientist. Over the years, we are working with different companies, and especially we are asking always for new products. And we have seen, especially when the products become a little bit customized, so not a quite a standard uh, product uh, that uh, do conventional tests, but when you go a little bit special, then there is a lack of experience. Then you always see some problems that you never know what if it is only for you, or if it is a general case for all users. So here, 
And we have asked several times from several companies to create a user community, let them share their experience, let them uh, share their thought with you. You can, you will always uh, developing the next generation in your R&D. Let's hear from us. Here inside Empress project and in, piece, in our PCP, we are now really want to make it to realize this idea. We will have a community of users and the uh, winners uh, who are responsible or are committed to make this community of users. The main things here is that the meetings uh, we would like to have uh, in each year, even after the project uh, from the companies so that the, all the customers or all the community, there would be basically potential customers uh, could share the information could pass the idea in an open platform to the uh, companies or to the manufacturer. And then <laughs> also uh, <clears throat> to learn from each other how they can uh, provide this. We have defined who should be the minimum requirement for the community of users. Basically, it will start from Impress Consortium as the first potential customers of the, your prototype. And then it will extend to other uh, communities from academia or uh, industry. Adaptation. This is our last use case. And here we are discussing about the phase three of the PCP procedure. In phase three, sorry. <clears throat> uh, as I explained uh, at the beginning, we would like to start from TM, but not limited, say, uh, limited to the TM. We would like to go beyond TM to different beam lines, to different analytical techniques. And for this, we need to adopt our specimen geometry, our uh, cartridge to be, to be able to do correlative experiments also in a beam line. There are some technical issues and some logistic issues. This one of the logistic issues that is, uh, the number of the test site uh, and the, their spread over Europe. The second is that which we mentioned as RIs, research infrastructure. The second are some, for example, geometrical aspects like uh, uh, based on the probe sites in different, uh, for example, X-ray beam lines and so on. The technical details you will receive in the tender document, but this is an, uh, a use case for the third phase of the PCP, when the approved prototypes will be distributed around Europe for validation and for running the experiment, which are proposed in the Impress proposal. In my last slide, as I said several times before, I will introduce you the test sites. Uh, the first test site would be Yulish as the main procurer of the PCP procedure. And as I explained in uh, one of uh, before, in phase two, all prototypes will come only to Yulish, will be tested and uh, examined in Yulish. After validation, they will go to at least eight more sites, which are our procurers, to, uh, and uh, it's include universities, research infrastructures, and so on uh, around Europe. Uh, to this end, I would like to thank you again, and I will uh, end my presentation. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Martina Berger. I'm from the Procurement Department from Forschungszentrum Jülich, and I will give some additional information about the tendering procedure. But first of all, a short disclaimer. This presentation is solely made for the purpose of initiating an open market presentation uh, consultation. It does not formally signify the beginning of a PCP procedure or constitute a commitment by Forschungszentrum Jülich or any other associated procurer to carry out such a procedure at a later stage. The final details of the PCP procedure could differ from the form presented today. If a formal PCP process is initiated, participation in this open market consultation will not be a precondition for bidding.
Yeah, a short overview again. Um, so our available budget will be two million, and um, our time time frame will be eighteen months, starting from March next year. Um, the start of the tendering phase will be in November uh, this year. The exact date we will yeah you will, will find on our web page. Um, so we'll be beginning or middle of uh, November, and the deadline for your bids will be in January next year. As already mentioned, the place of performance is quite important. So the majority of the R&D and operational activities related to the PCP, including the principal researchers working for the PCP, should be located in EU member states or associated countries. The procurers, as you already saw, we are a group of procurers, um, which consists of IFB, CNR, AREA, UA, ICN2, ELI, and FZJ. Our Forschungszentrum uh, will be the responsible lead procurer and act as a contracting authority in, in the name of in, on behalf of the procurers. Uh, we are a company with limited liability and um, Forschungszentrum Jüdisch is publicly funded nonprofit research organization, which is located in Germany. The procurement department is responsible for all the tendering process and pr procurements for its almost 7,120 employees and um, has experience with PCPs and PPIs. The legal framework, um, yeah, while the IMPRESS PCP procedure implements the PCP approach as set out by the European Commission, it will be carried out under German law. It will be conducted like an open-like procedure the tendering phase. So the purpose, of course, is to select the best suppliers for the PCP. And the main criteria will be technical quality and non-technical aspects like the place of performance, the price, et cetera. So um, the, the main criteria or the award criteria you will find later on in the tender documents a bit more specified. Um, so it's an open process and we will publish the tender documents, which will include the technical requirements the, and the evaluation criteria, which includes the evaluation criteria. Um, it will consist of a framework agreement, um, the, the phase of first, um, contract of, for phase one and um, yeah, the, the general um, criteria. The, we will also, have the verification of the bidder's qualification in that period and um, the assessment and selection of bids according to the predefined evaluation criteria. So we will have general award criteria, which will be for all three phases, but then we will have sub criteria for each phase, which will be published in separate tender documents per phase. Um, the selected bidders or consortia will be awarded contracts for the phase one and also framework agreements, which will cover the whole PCP. Uh, only suppliers who receive a framework contract can apply also for the next phase. And of course, if they successfully um, did the previous phase. So most important, how can you participate? So as soon as the tender opens um, on the PCP section on the, of the Impress website, you will find a link which directs you to the tendering portal, uh, which will show you also how to, and it will also show you how to register. So um, yeah, basically you will need to register, then you can download all the documents so that you have also an overview for the next phases. And um, Via this tendering portal, we will also manage all the questions and answers during the tendering procedure. So for, for the period till November, we will mainly use our um, PCP Impress uh, email as well as the, the um, questionnaire. But um, starting from November, it will all be handled via the, the tendering portal. So all the questions and answers will be available to everybody who downloaded the tender documents. Confidentiality and fairness. All information provided by candidates will be treated as confidential as needed. For the fairness of the process, all clarifications or information of general interest provided by Impress to a candidate during the tendering procedure will be made available to all candidates. And of course, these rules will also apply during the whole execution of the PCP. We appreciate your questions and comments. Thank you. Okay, so I would like to tie up 
the first part of the event today with a few comments which summarize what you've heard. So you heard a presentation from Regina, first of all, summarizing the aims of the IMPRESS project. And then you heard from Beatrice and Stefan about the legal aspects of the pre-commercial procurement tendering process, then Amir about the technical aspects of responding to the tender, and finally from Martina from the legal department of the lead procurer. There are some key aspects that should come through from all of these presentations. First of all, this concept of a standardized interoperable platform for electron microscopy is something that comes in response to the requirements of individual users and user communities. We realize this is an extremely disruptive concept, especially for larger instrument manufacturers, and also that it provides an interesting opportunity for smaller companies that may respond to the tender. Nevertheless, both smaller and larger companies are encouraged to engage with the tendering process because it requires the cooperation of both bidding companies and the companies that build electron microscope columns as well as existing and future owners of electron microscopes. Another important point is that the money available within the project that will be allocated to the companies that respond to the tender is relatively limited. And so one point that may not have come across so strongly is that the tender will primarily involve bringing together existing technologies that already exist in different companies, but are not implemented together at the moment. It can also be regarded in some ways as seed funding that will eventually provide the winning companies with a business advantage in the longer term. So just to provide a few points that have come across from the first stages of the IMPRESS project, we have already carried out a comprehensive uh, user feedback process where existing users were invited to share their needs for new requirements for electron microscopy and correlative techniques. We received responses to a survey from representatives of entire organizations that operate electron microscopy laboratories, but also from individual users working in both material science and biology. The results of the survey confirmed to us directly that the requirements of the project uh, respond correctly to the needs of users. And this means standardization of both hardware and console, control software for electron microscopy, which currently prevents some scientific uh, developments and some scientific needs of users, and also the development of improved correlative workflows and interoperable and interdisciplinary hardware uh, and analysis and control software within electron microscopy and between electron microscopy and other techniques. And we're not only talking here about the sample area, we're not only talking about uh, the part of the electron microscope column that involves adaptation of sample holders, we're talking about interoperability between hardware and control software between all parts of electron microscope columns and also between electron microscopes, preparation techniques, and other analytical techniques. The next stage now involves companies coming together and responding to the tender, primarily by making alliances with other companies. So companies are specifically encouraged to reach out 
to other companies that they may want to work with. And that not only includes companies that currently work on electron microscopy hardware, but also companies that are existing subcontractors and companies that do not currently work with electron microscopy uh, hardware manufacture. The idea is to form consortia that respond to the tender requirements, and this is unlikely to be possible by individual existing companies or by companies that currently work with electron microscopes. In order to facilitate the formation of alliances, there will be a matchmaking tool set up on the IMPRESS website to help companies to make connections with other companies to be able to respond to all the requirements of the tender successfully. As part of the open market consultation, please look at the PCP section of the IMPRESS website, e-impress.eu. There you will find all of the documentation for the open market consultation. And in particular, there is an open market questionnaire on the PCP section of the IMPRESS website, where alongside the Q&A session that we will have today, immediately after the presentations, any companies, will all companies will be invited to ask any further questions about the PCP process or the project, and responses to those questions will be published in a public way on the IMPRESS website. And so just to summarize, we will soon begin the tendering process and the tendering process will lead to three phases of the pre-commercial procurement in the project. A solution design phase, then building of prototypes and then validation and demonstration of prototypes initially by the lead procurer and then by other procurers. I should emphasize again that this project has a large number of partners, both electron microscopy groups and other research consortia. So we have a critical mass of partners who operate different electron microscopes and can reach out to different user communities on behalf of the wider electron microscopy community globally. And eventually, what we want is standardized interface and interoperable hardware and control software, which links different characterization techniques with preparation, with laboratory, benchtop experiments, and with sample storage in more flexible ways, which benefit not only end users, but also benefit all of the companies that take, especially those companies that respond positively to the tender process in the project. With that brief summary, I would like to finish, and I think we now have a short break, and then we move on to the Q&A session in a few minutes. Thank you.